this unit that we've got, um, we usually teach at the end of year 11. Um, a lot of it is actually really well suited to independent learning. Uh, so that's why we've chosen to go ahead with this unit. It is in, so uh, this unit is on both the double and triple award um, and can actually realistically be done at any point, year nine, 10 or 11. So that's why I've thrown it open to year nines and tens as well. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna have a go through uh, all these different resources here for this lesson. When it comes to reviewing this, uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to go through uh, a few nice examples that people have sent me. I'm going to show you my example of this. Uh, and as I guide you through my example, what I would like you to do, make annotations on your own work. Um, you're very welcome to do this as we go, or you can just listen and watch this back later. So your task was... Use the information given to you, which was uh, some YouTube videos supposed to create a timeline or storyboard or PowerPoint or poster. You were supposed to make something to show how the atmosphere has changed over a period of time. Uh, what you needed to include were these few factors. So composition of the atmosphere, i.e. like the percentages of gases in the air at certain points idea of volcanoes and how they contribute to the atmosphere, the theory of primordial soup, which is an important theory, sometimes called the soup of life as well. There it is. Uh, and how plants and animals contributed to the atmosphere as well. The idea of primordial soup uh, is a little bit of a weird one. And the video that I sent was a bit more advanced than what we actually needed to do. Um, it's nothing to do with any soup that you might want to eat. Um, we'll come to that in due course. So uh, the next few slides are some really lovely versions that people um, have sent to me. Um, I haven't been able to include them all. I've just cho chosen four examples that I really like the look of. Um, when it comes to handing in this work, I have emailed this out and I have messaged you on Modo. Check your messages. Um, I don't actually, and neither do you other teachers, we don't need to receive a copy of this work. OK, so when it comes to submitting it on Edmodo, you don't necessarily have to submit anything. The reason why we used assignments on that was so that you could see that there was a deadline for it and you can help yourself sort of get organised in that respect. OK, so here's a few nice little examples. Somebody just asked, do we have to do that work then? Yes, of course you have to do the work. This is on your GCSE um, and therefore it is examinable. Uh, this comes up on paper two in GCSE chemistry. And as I said, on both double and triple. So let's have a look at some lovely examples. Here we go. Here's one that was, I believe, emailed to me. Um, nice diagrams here. Uh, I like that they've got this little section up here. This refers to there being uh, no life at this point. Yeah, because quite a long period of time, there wasn't actually any type of organisms, living things for a long period of time. Um, although they've been a little bit naughty here. Don't forget symbols. Carbon dioxide. Uh, the O needs to be a capital one. Um, if it's a little letter that implies it's cobalt which is a, a completely different thing uh, we've got lightning we've got a nice representation here of the soup of life love this um, we have got a named process here photosynthesis or so an exam situation in an exam situation um, you do have to use keywords and, and key processes and photosynthesis is a great idea of it and uh, we've got a lot here about the new environment and ozone damage and the current composition as well so here and here they've definitely ticked off the idea of there being a composition of the atmosphere at different times uh, so really nice example here nice simple diagrams uh, that plane is way better than what i could ever draw so Fair shout to that person. Uh, what have we got here? Gorgeous. Look at the shading. Look at the colours. Uh, we've got some different bits here, including gorgeous diagram of dinosaur. Crazy skills a lot of you lot have got here. And we have got a really important idea here of something called ozone, which is O 
three. The ozone layer you should have all heard of, uh, even if you didn't necessarily understand what it is. The ozone layer is basically a protective layer that keeps our atmosphere in. If there is a massive hole in it, then the heat escapes and gases escape and it's bad times. Uh, what else have we got mentioned in this one that's very nice? We've got some gorgeous key language here. This idea is uh, a carbon sink is a very important idea uh, and we'll actually have an entire lesson on carbon and why it's important and what we can do with carbon in our atmosphere. Got the ideas here about algae and uh, yeah, ozone formation, lovely example, beautiful shading, nice descriptions. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, this is another one. So this one was not a poster. Uh, this one was a PowerPoint. I've not put the entire PowerPoint in. I've just put a few different slides here. Um, so uh, within this, what have we got? We've got, I mean, it looked very professional, very informative and professional layout. I love it very much. Uh, we've got some nice keywords. So we've got ozone being mentioned here. We've got vapor being mentioned here. Uh, comprised, that's a very nice la -di -da way of putting it. Um, some great key language that we've got here, however, they've been extremely naughty at one point. Naughty word, naughty word. I've warned you all about this word. I know, I know. Amounts is a very naughty word. Uh, amounts in a GCSE exam could mean volume concentration it could be percentage it could be mass it could be density amounts is not a great word uh, so the person who did this actually said yeah it looks absolutely great but amounts is a naughty word uh, and i believe that they changed it to volume or percentage which yep yeah, good shout you made an improvement there love it uh, another example here of somebody doing a powerpoint absolutely lovely all sorts of really nice detail here some of it a bit more advanced than what we need to do um, and you have got to be a little bit careful ladies and gents girls boys and others when you are using the tinter web uh, that you're not just copy and pasting um for example this peculiar duality that doesn't look like something that somebody in year nine or ten would say so if you are using things from the internet please make sure uh, you actually know what these different keywords mean. Uh, but within this one, we have got some really cool keywords. And actually over here, we have got, uh, and in here as well, uh, some really nice, what we call um, cross-curricular links. So these are great links to biology, especially this one that's talking about uh, the mammals and the sort of adaptations of those. Really lovely stuff. Uh, over here as well, the 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 fact that people are talking about um, comets and meteors. Now, on our course, the comets and meteors and their contribution to the atmosphere and to the entire environment itself, it's not really covered. So we will mention it for today, um, but we don't have to worry about it uh, in the big scheme of things. OK, so just four really nice examples of one sent over by students. There's no way I could post everyone's up that impressed me so if yours hasn't has been mentioned there you know good shout um if yours hasn't please don't be offended it's just i only have a set amount of time um that i can sort of put things up for everyone else to view but uh, no some absolutely gorgeous examples there uh so gorgeous in fact mine looks a little bit simple uh as a comparison okay so uh this is mine nice and simple um OK, so what I'm going to do, these are the ways that I want them going across like that. Anyway, this is uh, my representation. What we're going to do is we're going to go through each one in turn, pick out the key points um, and hopefully add some more stuff to yours. Now, yours doesn't have to look exactly like this, but the key points um, do need to be covered. OK. So. Step one for me, um, they asked, well, I asked as a starter, um, what was the composition of the atmosphere like in these early sort of stages? Uh, the one in the cat video, I love the cat video, James. Right, early atmosphere then. So um, this is the representation that they showed on the video, the silly video where the kid called James kept drawing cats and they went, James. 
I love that video. It's just a really nice representation of how the things change over the years. Now, looking through the different sources, different sources state different percentages and different quantities. For example, uh, this was one that I think I stole from a GCSE paper where in this one, the percentage of carbon dioxide is significantly higher. And there is actually water shown in this one, whereas in the other ones, water wasn't shown. Um, so the thing that we need to bear in mind is the period of time that we're talking about is about 4.5 billion years ago, long period of time ago. Um, we were not here. So therefore, everything that we're using to sort of come up with these statistics and figures, it's all based on evidence. And obviously, there's loads of different evidence from a long period of time. So and depending at the time frame that we're looking at, the composition of the atmosphere will vary. But the important point is, whichever one that you're given, it's very different to today's atmosphere. So here's another one uh, that shows there's more water vapour. There's one of the early Earth there. As I said, realistically, it doesn't matter exactly which one it is. What matters is you can look at something like that in an exam situation. They'll present you with one of these or a different one and they'll say, this was the atmosphere of the early Earth. Explain how our current atmosphere is different and suggest some ways that it has gone from this point here to what it is today, which we're obviously going to be looking at now. The big thing that we do need to know from this is in this early atmosphere, the Earth was extremely hot. OK, so as you may know from physics, um, we believe the Earth was formed by there are all sorts of different theories. Obviously, um, the one that is most commonly accepted is that there were lo loads of different rocks and meteors and two particularly big ones slammed together. Uh, and because they were so big, they had gravity, so they were rotating. All the rocks and meteors and stuff joined onto it. At this point in history, uh, the Earth was very, very hot. There was lava all over this place. There was magma. Um, in geography, uh, you'll probably know the difference between lava and magma. One is when it's under the Earth's crust, when it's actually in the mantle still. One of it's when it's breached the core's crust and it's come out through a volcano. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which one is which. Uh, it doesn't come up on the chemistry specification. Um, I'm just mentioning it now just for a little bit of background knowledge. So extremely hot, lots of lava. And as I showed you last time, it looked a little bit something like this. So you can see here streams of magma um, and all sorts of volcanic activity here. And here is nice and cooled down. So my second bit on my PowerPoint is all sorts of gases being given off from the volcanic emissions. Now, at this point, the ozone layer had not yet been formed. So a lot of these gases were just going straight up and out into space. They didn't necessarily hang around a lot. There are all um, there are different gases that are present there. Uh, the most important ones that you should note are this one, the carbon dioxide, CO2 should be used to seeing that representation there, um, and water. I'd like to think by now you know they are the products of a combustion reaction. But there are other gases there as well in smaller quantities. Uh, this NH3 is called ammonia. It is a great source of nitrogen. Uh, combustion is a posh way of saying burning, by the way. Uh, nitrogen, again, um, our current atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, so there are little bits of it given off here. Uh, this molecule is methane. Um, which some of you might know more flippantly as cow farts. Uh, cows uh, in their stomachs, they have got a bacteria that when it helps break down food, it does release methane. So yes, there are bacteria that can cause you to fart methane. Um, however, they are not present in human beings, so it is not possible to light a human fart because methane is flammable. So this one here, CH4, is methane. NH3 up here is called ammonia. These two chemicals you will get more familiar with over the course uh, of the entire course, not just this unit itself. So ammonia is NH3, CH4 is called methane, H2O is water, uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, you know this anyway. Um, 
nitrogen is N2. And this thing down here is called sulfur dioxide. So sulfur, two oxygens, so that'd be dioxide, just in the same way that that is a dioxide there. So sulfur dioxide is not particularly pleasant. Um, sulfur dioxide is an asthma trigger. So if you are near a chemical reaction where it's making uh, sulfur dioxide and you have asthma, you are likely to have an asthma attack. But equally, if this dissolves into bodies of water, it can cause acid rain. So acid rain is a big issue as well. Now we'll be looking at that a little bit later on. This was around uh, 4.5 billion years ago. And as I said, right before, um, a lot of these gases were escaping up out of the atmosphere because the atmosphere wasn't necessarily established at this point. The thermometer down here is representing that it is still extremely hot. And as I said, most gases simply boiled away and escaped off into space. And the volcanoes were extremely active and released lots of different gases. The main ones I have highlighted there, carbon dioxide and water. The ones underlined are just extra little bonus ones. Okay, okay. step three. Eventually, uh, so the, the earth or the rocks getting together, smush, mush, mush. It was extremely hot at first, but eventually this heat started escaping off into space. Carbon dioxide and oxygen and a few other things did <laughs> did react together uh, and we eventually got ozone so o3 being formed now that o3 that ozone started building up formed our ozone layer so less gases were escaping so this picture here represents a few different things happening you can see here the thermometer is lower than it was on the previous one. So the Earth is cooling as excess heat is lost to space. Because it's cooling, it's going to get to a point where the water vapour that was given off by your volcanoes here, the water vapour isn't going to keep evaporating. It's going to start condensing. So they'll get closer together to form the clouds. Now in the cloud, it is still there in the gas form. But then as it gets cooler, we get something called precipitation. Precipitation in terms of making new chemicals means that an insoluble solid is formed and they're usually pretty colours. Uh, in terms of the water cycle in the atmosphere, precipitation means basically raindrops being formed. So Water vapour condensed. Where did it go? Uh, well, gravity worked and it went down and it started to form the first oceans. Now, just because there's oceans there doesn't necessarily mean that there was life there, because there is a balance and equilibrium between what is in the air and what is in the water, as we will discover in a later lesson. Water vapour condenses, forms the first oceans, but again, anything that's in the air is in the water. So all the sulfur dioxide, the nitrates, the methane, the soot, all the yucky stuff coming out of the volcanoes would also get absorbed into the water. So the oceans were not a nice place to be. They were extremely acidic and in some places pretty damn toxic. Uh, the acidity is due to a few different things. So it could be due to the carbon dioxide. Oh my days, that is not good to write on. Uh, so carbon dioxide will dissolve in water to form something called carbonic acid, which is HCO3, not that that's come up particularly well. Uh, so that carbonic acid is not nice at all. And just as I said before, the sulfur dioxide, the SO2, uh, that can react with hydrogen to make sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Do you see why I use PowerPoints in lessons normally, people? Um, because writing like this is awful. These oceans were extremely acidic and not particularly nice. Um, but a little interesting thing that happened as well is due to this balance between the water and the air, some of the carbon dioxide that was in the air get, got absorbed into the water. Some of it broke down to form uh, carbonic acid, increase the acidity of the seawater further. But then some of it got broken down and used into different things. And there is a la -di -da way of saying this. So that's why it's there in bold and in red. Sequestration, or if something is sequestered, um, that is a special method of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. 
carbon dioxide can be absorbed into bodies of water and into uh, rocks in particular as well. So this carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere gets soaked up into the water and then can actually, if you've got rocks at the bottom of the ocean, which obviously you do because that's bedrock and you've got like the, the um, what's, what do we call it? Uh, the seabed. Uh, so some carbon dioxide will get trapped in there. As I said before, we're going to have a look at that in the carbon lesson. So step number four, what we have got here, as I mentioned before, there are many different bits and bobs in the ocean. Bonk! Yes, indeed, honk. Uh, this is a little silly way of remembering the elements needed for life. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, honk! It's a silly noise. Really nice question there. Um, somebody's just sent a question. If carbon dioxide is soaked into our oceans, wouldn't that help global warming? Yes. Yes, it does. But the problem is the ocean can only take so much. And when it does absorb it, just like we said before, when carbon dioxide dissolves into water, it makes the oceans acidic. Now, that increasing acidity is doing damage to the coral reef in particular. We, we are going to talk about that properly in a carbon cycle. So let's carry on with this for now. Many different compounds in the ocean. So not necessarily uh, just in the elemental form here, like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. Those elements will be locked up in different compounds. For example, uh, in methane, so the CH4, in ammonia, the NH3. But these different compounds contained those four important elements, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and they're what we call the building blocks for life. And this idea of these elements through different compounds being in the oceans, that is called the soup of life or the primordial soup. OK, so the, the, uh, the oceans containing all those different compounds and elements that is the soup of life because they have all the building blocks that we need for life. It had the hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and carbon. We don't entirely know how those elements decided to get together. And obviously they didn't decide because they weren't people with frame of minds and opinions. We're, we're anthropomorphizing them somewhat there. Uh, some great questions coming through here. Uh, aren't our oceans expanding? Yes, our oceans are expanding. Uh, global warming. And a really nice little question here. If water can absorb CO2, does that mean that we could theoretically store carbon dioxide in the ice in the Arctic slash Antarctic? Yes, we can, in theory. That, and that's what sequestration is. There, there are companies that do actually do that where they um they basically pump down into like lower, lower down in the seabed and they pump in the carbon dioxide. Um, into little stores there. Is that an ideal solution? Um, well, it's 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 definitely not flipping cheap. And problem is, if the carbon dioxide is, and there we go, somebody said it, uh, if the carbon dioxide escapes again, so won't the melting of the ice caps be, be releasing more CO2 then? Yes. Yes, it can. So it's it's a short term solution sequestration. We we need to we need to find a better version and the 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 best way of dealing carbon dioxide is not to flip in, make it in the first place. So as you saw on one of the videos that I sent out, there are a few different theories. Um, somebody just asked there, why has nobody attempted to make life? They have. Uh, and we are actually going to talk about that a little bit later. So um, it was the miller ure experiment. I'm going to send that up on, on Edmodo. Uh, should we all stop breathing to stop carbon dioxide? Yes some more so than others. Why is it a soup though? I don't know why they called it a soup, they just did. It's just a mixture of different stuff, like imagine little bits of veg floating around, there we go, that represents carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, I don't know, that, that's just what they call it. But from those videos they believe that some sort of spark or an energy source uh, forced those elements to combine because those elements in the compounds that they were in, they are not particularly reactive at all. So what they needed to do is get some energy to break their bonds. Year 10s, we're talking meeting activation energy. Year 9s, you've not come across that yet. <laughs> Somebody just said, I love the non-breathing idea, might give that a go. Please do not hold your breath, try and save the planet. Um, try, try turning a few lights off and not using the car so much and not going on planes. Okay, that, that's a better way to do it. And yeah, planting more plants, that's a great way of cutting carbon dioxide emissions. So that's 
part number four. We believe a spark caused them to combine, but we don't entirely know, but that's what they're talking about on the GCSE level. So uh, this representation here, when I've done it in lesson in the past, people have said, uh, why, why are those frying pans got pictures drawn on them? They're not frying pans. Um, they're meant to be uh, magnifying glasses, sort of zoomed in loads and loads and loads. There's the elements for life. Honk. And what they did is they got together and they formed something called an amide linkage. So in biology, um, you should have talked about these before, uh, especially amino acids. So an amide linkage is what starts to build together to make an amino acid. So year 10s in your photosynthesis unit in biology, you should be fairly familiar with this, the idea that glucose, uh, which is C6H12O6, can react with nitrate ions, which is NO3 uh, with a minus charge at the top. They get together to form some amino acids. Year 9s, you've not talked about that before. Don't worry about that. You will hear about that in year 10. OK, so amino acids, there they are. Amino is the spelling there. Get together uh, and the amino acids are the building blocks to make proteins. Those proteins combine together to make cells. Those cells combine together to make tissues. And here we go. This is the entire process here. And this apparently, according to Mr. Bateson, uh, is year seven basic biology. Proteins combine to make cells. Cells get together to make tissues. Tissues get together to make organs. Organ systems are all organs together. Uh, and that gets together to make, form an organism. OK, so again, cross curricular link uh, to biology there. Uh, we do have amino acids in us. That is um, our, our base pairs, I think, from DNA uh, and proteins. We, we are protein. That's We are muscles, we are tissues. So yeah, of course we've got amino acids in us. Good question. Okay, so these get together to form the amino acids. The amino acids get together to form proteins. Here I've got some little representations. I like to think you could recognize that as a palisade cell, a little cheeky plant cell. Elements of life, amide linkage for amino acid. They get together to form cells, the cells together to form tissues. And actually for a long time, there were only plant-based life forms around. So let's start with a small little plant, evolving to a bigger plant, evolving to a bigger plant. I appreciate that's not how uh, biology works, but I'm a chemistry teacher, so yeah. So, and step six on my representation, what we have got. The plant uh, through photosynthesis, now plants do photosynthesis and respiration, okay, so they do give out carbon dioxide, but they also take it in as well. Uh, and it kind of ended up being a nice little cycle where for a long time um, only plants existed. Any sort of places where animals or animal-like organisms could evolve were still a bit too toxic and too dangerous. Now, in the soup of life, those the, the seas, the oceans very, very early on, uh, the oceans, as we said before, were quite toxic and they were very acidic. Um, and it took some time for them to become suitable for supporting cellular life, for example, bacteria. Um, but algae was around for a little bit of time then uh, and evolved eventually into the plants. Eventually, however, what we did get, uh, so there we go, first plant-based life forms taking place, photosynthesis was happening. This reduced CO2. So again, we are coming across another way of reducing carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis took place. This reduced carbon dioxide and increased oxygen, which is O2, capital O, little two subscript down at the very bottom there. So what actually ended up happening is the CO2 was dropping and dropping and dropping and the, car and the oxygen levels were getting higher and higher and higher. And so actually it would have get, gotten to a point for the plants that there was too much oxygen in the atmosphere. So it was kind of fortunate, actually, that biological animal based organisms came around at this point. Again, this is just my very silly representation of evolution. And again, I appreciate that's not how evolution works. Um, but the increased quantity of oxygen in the atmosphere allowed non plant based organisms to develop and evolve to where we are at today. Now, equilibrium is a very posh la -dee -da word and a film from uh, the early 2000s. Interesting film, got Christian Bale in. Uh, equilibrium is a 
balance. So there again, with all these la-da-da words that I throw at you, there are different contexts for these words. The context within science is a balance between, uh, in this example anyway, in the atmosphere, uh, levels of the gases. So a balance between the levels of gases. So equilibrium is just a balance. And in this case, it's a balance between the gases given off by plants and the gases absorbed and given off by animals, animals and plants. Once the equilibrium was established, there wasn't much difference for a good sort of 200 million years until we came along. Uh, and now things are starting to change a little bit uh, and not necessarily in a good way. So this brings us to today and today's composition of the atmosphere. So uh, majority of our atmosphere these days is nitrogen, closely followed by oxygen, and then 1% of others. One thing that has been very interesting about um, obviously all, all the corona stuff, Corona is obviously not good at all, um, but in terms of carbon dioxide emissions, uh, it's frightening the difference that us all being quarantined has made in terms of the atmospheric chemistry there. Um, is it going to be enough to save us all? Don't know. Um, we don't know. Only time will tell. Um, um, obviously, we've got scientific models for predicting these things, but we can only wait and see. Uh, oh, good question here as well. Uh, why do we make such a big impact compared to other animals other than the industrial side of things? Um, it's, it is the industrial side of things. The fact that we have created all these machines and we, we burn fossil fuels so much, that is our big impact. So, yeah. So if all humans died out, would the Earth's atmosphere still remain stable or would it be imbalanced with too much oxygen and not enough carbon dioxide? Again, that's a really interesting question um, because do you remember uh, like last year when all Greta Thun Thunberg and all that was all in the news and, and the news and the scientists were saying that we're reaching a point where if we don't cut our emissions and um, the damage is going to be irreversible. Um, as long as we're still before that point, then yeah, probably if like literally boom, humans were gone, um, then yeah, in theory, the atmosphere would re-establish its equilibrium of what it should be like. Um, but if we've already gone past the point of damage, then no, it'll probably stay consistent. Uh, anyway, let's get back to this. So uh, yeah, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen uses. Nitrogen uh, in this form, in the N2, is mega, 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 mega unreactive. To get nitrogen to react, uh, you have got to give it a heck of a lot of energy. Um, one of the natural examples where nitrogen reacts is lightning. So when lightning strikes, the air around the lightning, it gets just enough energy for the nitrogen to react and make nitrogen oxides, uh, which is really helpful for plants because plants really like nitrogen oxides because they're very good, um, again, for building proteins and amino acids for their uh, cellular structures. So today's atmosphere, 78% nitrogen, which, yeah, we don't talk about nitrogen that much because in the nicest possible way, it's pretty boring. It doesn't do an awful lot. Um, we talk about nitrogen I think it's towards the end of year 11 in something called the harbour process. So I will not tell you any more about nitrogen right now. 21% oxygen and the others is about 1%. So within that others, there's all sorts of different things. Some of them you heard of, some of them you won't have heard of. Uh, sometimes we say that there are trace quantities. Trace just means there's such a tiny about, it's not even worth putting in numbers. But if you want to put them in numbers, uh, there they are. Now, you do not have to memorize these. You do not have to know them. Um, do not worry about those. You are not going to be get tested on these. I mean, look at how many decimal places goes to. That's just ridiculous. Oh, interesting question. Why are we not adapted to live on nitrogen if there is so much of the stuff? Really cool question. Um, basically, uh, I mean, this is a really high level stuff. You don't need to know this. Um, basically due to the way that nitrogen bonds as i said before nitrogen is extremely unreactive so one of the reasons that well the reason that we need oxygen is for respiration to happen now respiration is your uh, a source of fuel so like glucose for example plus oxygen and because they are of a similar reactivity the oxygen can actually react 
with the glucose, with the hydrocarbon, whatever it may be, and break that up and use that as energy somewhere else in the body. Whereas if it was nitrogen, the energy requirement to break that bond in the nitrogen is far too high. Um, really cool question. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, we, we can't live off nitrogen. Okay, so those are different compositions. And the one thing that is quite worrying, when I started teaching, which I think I worked out was about 10 years ago now, um, when I started teaching, this number was significantly lower. Um, so about 10 years ago when I was teaching, I always taught that it was 0.03% of the atmosphere was carbon dioxide, um, but now it's closer to 0.04%. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, well, it really, it really is in the terms of things, and we're seeing some really bad influences of that. Ooh, another question. There is only a tiny part of the atmosphere that is made up of carbon dioxide, so why is it having such a big impact? Amazing question. We will talk about that when we do about global warming. Warming. Um, another question. Why do we use oxygen to live, but plants use carbon dioxide to live? Um, plants should use oxygen too. Plants do both photosynthesis and respiration um, one of them stores the energy one of them releases energy so we it, yeah it's not that plants don't use oxygen uh, it's just that we don't have the ability to use carbon dioxide as as animal based life forms uh, and again some gorgeous questions coming in about greenhouse gases in the atmosphere i'm going to leave that until our lesson on greenhouse gases um and that however that however is the point that i was just making there that it started when i was teaching about 10 years ago as 0.03 percent and now it's nearly 0.04 percent bad times bad times okay uh, and yeah here we go this is this is how we are adding to the atmosphere as well so emissions from factories emissions from cars uh deforestation Again, we're talking about this in a bit more detail in a future lesson. So, so here's us. Here's the sort of to-do list that we had to do. Uh, you should include composition of the atmosphere. Yes, we did. We saw it at the start. We saw it at the end. Boom, done. How volcanoes contributed to the atmosphere? Yep, they gave off lots of gases. We saw the gases. We are able to name those gases. A job done. How life arrived, the primordial soup, just the idea that there were elements needed for life Hog. in the early oceans. Um, they got a little bit of uh, energy somehow, and therefore life arrived because it evolved through the amide linkages, the amino acids, protein cells, blah, 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 blah. How animals and plants contributed to the atmosphere. Yeah, we've seen that through photosynthesis and respiration and a few other processes as well, including, uh, now we've not talked about this today, but we've got uh, excretion death and decay, uh, and man-made, or synthetic, I should say, equal opportunities there, uh, synthetic processes that we do. And actually, I didn't put this in the original one, but we've already started talking about the carbon cycle and things that we can do, uh, whether they be artificial, so synthetic, or naturally occurring, we have seen some phenomena that cause the percentage of CO2 to drop. Boom done so what questions have we got let's have a look uh will the rest of the chemistry year nine lessons be on webinar is this a weekly thing what i was planning on doing is keeping using uh youtube lessons um because they're just everyone's got a bit more flexibility and they can just do it when they need to do it and then i think what we'll keep doing is using this monday slot to review the work that we've done and then i'll set some more work and then we will review it in these webinar things as well. Uh, what things do we need to complete before next lesson? I will get that to you. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm posting some of that this evening uh, and I am going to be uh, filming some videos later to give out on Tuesday, ideally. Will I set work in the webinar? No, the webinars at the minute are purely used to review the work that we have done. Um, will you still have webinars over the Easter holidays? No. Would I rather be a duck or a mouse? Uh, gotta go duck. They're, they're really cute. I really like ducks. Does that mean we no longer have the Thursday webinars? I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to use them yet. I'm open to ideas. Um, there's so much to do. It's ridiculously overwhelming. 
I know, I on, honestly I do. Um, that's why I prefer to do it over YouTube because then you can just do it when you get chance. If you fall behind, it's not going to be the end of the world um, because as I say, with my stuff, I'm going to save it and post it on YouTube. You do it when you get chance to do it. Okay, Thursday webinars, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, when is Easter? Easter starts this Friday, so there's nothing next week. Do we have work over Easter? Uh, well, I am going to set some, but we're probably not going to review it until after Easter. Uh, class code for Edmodo. Oh, sweet zombie Jesus. If you have not signed up on Edmodo yet, you have been sent so many emails about this. Uh, so go back onto your school email address and search for Edmodo and Bateson and it will come up there. Uh, if you need anything, Edmodo is the way to go. If you are still not on Edmodo, sort it out. Get yourself on it. Uh, be good. Check your Edmodo for regular updates um, and check your emails as well. Have a lovely day. Be good. Wash your hands. Stay at home. Behave. Bye-bye now.